Those opening shots were from the 45 ACP Colt 1911. This is the government model, 5-inch barrel. And I was shooting the Hornady XTP. This is a plus P load for 45, 200 grain bullet. Advertised muzzle velocity of 1,055 feet per second. My five shot average is 1,011 feet per second. So you have to wonder how that's going to be impacted with a shorter barrel that a lot of folks are going to be carrying compared to, say, the five inch Colt. This is a light for caliber load. 230 grain is typically what I'm shooting out of the Colt. And I'm getting a little bit more snap or recoil out of these shots and I would say a 230 grain load but still very manageable so I am anxious to see this being my first 200 grain 45 ACP test how these are going to uh, be impacted by the sim test media that's calibrated to ballistic gel specs plus four layers of denim and we're going to be shooting from a distance of 10 feet then we're going to measure expansion and penetration No exit from the 20 inch 50 pound block. Let's go find it. I have some strange lighting this time of day, but I'm gonna do best I can with it. This is a quick glimpse of the left side of the track, the first uh, six or seven inches of penetration. We're gonna focus down here on the right side of the track as I was cutting through the media. About the first inch and a quarter, we start to see some expansion. This cavity at its widest point is approximately three quarters of an inch, but generally it is about half an inch. And the depth, where we're getting some cutting from some expanded pedals, is about half an inch deep. What I would call a stretch cavity runs for about uh, four and a half inches, and the bullet settles down. What is that? The seven inch mark, eight inch, pretty much running a straight path through the media. Still going, and again, I apologize for the lighting, still going all the way out past the 17 inch mark. The leading edge is at 17.75 inches. And if you look from this perspective, haven't checked yet to see if we have any denim in the cavity, but uh, one thing you notice about these XTPs, regardless of caliber, is that they don't expand that much these pedals seem to be really thin and they generally peel all the way back to the core of the bullet. Not a lot of expansion. Let's get that confirmed. There's one mark, 0.656, and the average is just below that at 0.653 inches. Did not have any denim in the hollow point cavity and after rinsing out the media, retained weight is coming in at 200.5 grains. I have to say, this is not quite what I expected with regard to penetration. With a lighter, faster bullet, I expected much less than this. But uh, think about it, you've got a piece of lead that's nearly half an inch diameter cruising along at just over 1,000 feet per second. It has very tight, compact expansion. Uh, you're just throwing a big piece of lead through there, and until it runs out of gas, which it did, it's going to stop. So I think there might be a little bit of concern of overpenetration uh, with these loads. I know a lot of folks will crank this up in a hand load and push it uh, closer to 1100 feet per second, maybe a little bit faster. With regard to this plus P designation, I want to point out the brass. This is from that shot. Notice this also on my chronograph shots and the five shots there at the opening of the video. I am not seeing any signs of a pressure spike or uh, bulging in that brass. So this plus P designation may be more of a marketing gimmick unless you can truly hand load these and push these up to faster velocities, but I don't know how that's going to impact performance. Thanks for watching.